Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you the power of Kempunk Chainsword Rush Nocturne. We've been seeing this item taking over the meta a lot with different AD junglers, particularly melee ones. The reason is because this item is so inexpensive. At only 2,800 gold, it is much cheaper than most other mythics that you can build. While simultaneously, it gives you 55 AD, which is just as much or more than a lot of different mythics as well, especially Divine Sunderer and different Bruiser mythics don't even give 55 AD. So basically it's a really inexpensive rush, a lot of AD, a lot of HP, solid 25 ability haste. That's really, really good. And then obviously the hill cut is extremely valuable. With that being said, you might be wondering why go Ignite if we are already gonna be rushing this. We're up against Trundle. If you're up against a Trundle or Warwick, something that's going to be Giga Scrappy, you should consider taking Ignite or Exhaust so you can guaranteed win the solo one versus one. It'll give you more scuttle opportunities, more invade opportunities, and it'll also make it challenging for junglers to be aggressive against you since they'll have that advantage. With that being said, Flash and Ghost are still great options on Nocturne. It's hard to go wrong with it. You will lose out on some early game solo capabilities though. Generally want to go W level 2 for the 30% extra attack speed. Nocturne farm is very healthy and very straightforward. You use your Q when it's up. It does damage, and when you're on top of it, you get extra AD and movement speed. Whenever your Q hits a champion, it will leave a trail so you can chase them. It makes it very convenient as they try to escape since Nocturne doesn't have great gap closers. Your only gap closer is the speed up from your Q the speed up from your E, which is 90% once they're feared, and then obviously your R dash as well. Outside of that, you don't really have a great gap closer, like a Rengar or a Kha'Zix, so gotta work with what you got. At this point, you would normally go for your E. I suppose you could go another point in Q, but it's best to get E just to be safe. If you get into a solo fight, you'll want to have that fear, or if it turns out they started in your jungle, you're gonna want to have all three abilities because if if you only get five out of six of your camps you'll still be level three and not level four and you'll leave yourself hanging out to dry it looks like trundle gank top or pretty early there if he tries to mess with us he'll get absolutely devastated something interesting about your ease it actually has really good really really good base damage we're going to take these at the same time with red buff burn, with our Q AoE, and with passive AoE. We could have taken those together much sooner. We should have pulled the blue over. You should be finishing your full clear on Nocturne, similar to a Master Yi, around 325 if you get Leash. We'll go top. We'll skip Scuttle. Teemo's looking free. He has no boots. This probably isn't even worded at this point. Yeah. Going to try to get as close to him as we can. Get the fear on. I spell shielded perhaps early there and Singe almost just gave him the gold. That would have really sucked. Once again, fighting on top of our trail. We, we really want to uh, finish shoving in the wave though. That's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to hold it off here to the side so it will crash. We're getting a lot of golden XP from this as well. We're already level five as a jungler, which is very good for us. That being said, we are missing a lot of these, but the waves crash. By the time Synergy gets back, it should be reset for him. I'm going to spell shield his Q here. Hit him with the ignite. And he's dead. Ooh, Teemo has pressed the attack. So Teemo gets the kill. He does miss out on pretty much all the minions, and the wave's still going to reset. So like, this is still fine for Singe. It's going to rebound back into him. We got the Nocturne, I mean the Trundle Flash there, so not bad. Could be a lot worse. We'll look for Executioners first. It seems weird to rush Executioners. The item has been tweaked, though. 20 base 80 is very, very high. That, that, that's very good. It's just as much as call fields. So, Executioner is a great first item buy, and then we buy as much of our call fields as we can afford. We're not going to buy boots pre 6 on Nocturne. Since you're level 6, it doesn't matter if you have boots or not. You can close the distance. And you'll see, since we soaked two minion waves worth of XP, we just hit a pre 6 minute. We hit a 530 level 6. 
you only soak one minion wave you'll hit it pre seven minute 30 if you soak two minion waves oftentimes you can hit it pre six minutes so generally as a jungler if you don't soak any minion waves you're shooting for seven minute 30 to eight minute 15. we hit it extremely early here soraka was either afk i don't know what she's low level ash is high level We'll take this into the fear. The ignite should finish him off there. Beautiful. Dark Harvest Camille. I don't think I've ever seen that mid lane before ever. Oh my goodness. I'll look for a fight on Trundle. I shouldn't really have two control words though. That's kind of newbie. We don't have boots, so this isn't exactly ideal. Okay, Trundle's mid. I was going to kite this down and we'd have a Blast Cone to go to. Camille should be able to live. Trundle has lethal tempo, so she can't really win that. It just won't work. He's going to path over here into his wolves. <clears throat> we'll hit him with our Q. With the fear 90% bonus movement speed down he goes i think we can get his wall well it's too dangerous their bot lane's gonna rotate you can't get away from ash on nocturne you don't have the kit to do so so we actually do have to leave here we could try to solo dragon i don't have mid prio so i think just soaking this wave is best stop him from getting multi plates is fine camille would miss basically all of this anyways she might have gotten here for the last three range creeps or we can get a hundred percent of it it's an easy decision now if your laner is gonna get the majority of it or a massive chunk you really shouldn't be taking it like that but she was still in base she was gonna miss almost all of that She looked for the all-in, not surprisingly, it's not going to turn out because she has Dark Harvest. Dark Harvest is one of the worst summoner spells in the game. It only works on certain champions. Nocturne is going to have his dash, so I don't know if I can really kill him here. I mean, Talon's going to have his dash. What am I saying? Yeah, it's not really worth it. He's going to hop over something before I can get to him. I think he's got to go to his right side. She flashed really early. Ooh, she knocked him out of that. I had my spell shield on. That shouldn't have bounced me back. It's kind of baloney. He doesn't really have anywhere to go to here. Yeah, that, that's ridiculous. Your spell shield is supposed to make you immune to all ability effects. And the plant's a knockback, so... For example, Olaf can't be blasted when he's on his R, so I'm pretty sure this should block that. But it doesn't, clearly. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead, max R, E second, W last. He gets a lot of damage per level. Trundle's screwed there. I'm gonna get his red buff too. We could just start dragging, I guess. When I said red buff too, I meant blue buff. He already had red, but he hadn't taken his blue quite yet. Fight on top of our trail. Hit a refill. I'm going to hold on to E since Talon's in the area. I don't want to die to him. He's trying to pinch a kill. Hit him with the blue smite so he can't keep up. Down he goes. I'm going to die if my teammates don't help me here. I don't have a way of, oh, this is bad. We need to get on top of the Raka. We're gonna block that dragon attack with our W, which is gonna give us extra attack speed. All dragon autos count as abilities, so it's gonna rip your Banshees or your Sivir Spell Shield as well. Q into E. Yeah, these guys are kind of screwed now. This game's going to get really hard for them. We're probably going to have to do a part two. Whenever games end pre-20, 20, 25 minute mark, I like to do part twos to give you guys a different flavor. Because at this point, the game is functionally, it's essentially over. We're so fed. 
even if they pull themselves together and stop throwing, it's too late. That being said, now's a great time to take an objective since they're all dead and they don't really have map pressure. Just go ahead and smite it. We'll go ahead and reset. Harold's tempting. It's not the right call since we're sitting on so much gold. I could try to fight him all in. I don't want to though. We might get caught out by the ash. For your boots on Nocturne, for Lethality, you go Ionian. Lethality Nocturne isn't really viable right now. We'll push for Plated instead. And then we'll go for, I'd say Death Stance, honestly, or Stride Break. Stride Break's good. We can go Shield Bow. Shield Bow is super, super, super strong on Nocturne. It lets you go into more of a crit style build. After Shield Bow, you can kind of just start building AD carry style items and you're still super tanky. Like for example, you could go Shield Bow into, um, you could just pick up a Bork, go Surlds into IE. Do giga huge damage and still be very tanky from the HP on this plus the shield bow 600 shield and obviously life still is basically a tank stat these days because there's hill cuts hard harder to get most people don't like to build hill cut after the hill cut nerfs luckily Kempunk chain sword since it's inexpensive is a great jungler's first item rush since jungle usually has the least consistent access to gold unless you're willing to take your laners minions which in this particular game we have we have been very fortunate and we've had lots of opportunities to share minions or take them just because our laners have been dying a lot go ahead and r the ash w mid air hit her with the q we still have blue smite to chase down goes rocka baka and we'll look for the invade off that being able to survive long is super valuable with lethality i mean <laughs> With lethal tempo, more on hit nocturne. Longer you stay alive. Once you hit your six stack lethal tempo, every stack gives you around 14%, 13% attack speed. Stacks up to six times. So 13 times six. It's like 78% 78, 78 attack speed for melees. So it's a lot of extra stats. Help Ezreal push that real quick. Ooh, Trundle's out of position. Nice pike engage. We'll hit him with the EQ. He's trying to get to the wall. Fear him away from it. Harold's gonna go straight. Wow, it's running past us. I thought Harold was supposed to attack nearby enemies that were before the turrets. That's outrageous. Harold is smurfing. So yeah, Lethality Nocturne is not really viable. I've talked about this a lot. Lethality and Sork Shoes. Lethality is essentially flat armor penetration and uh, magic penetration, such as Sork Shoes, is flat magic penetration to where after the durability buffs a couple of patches ago to where it gave every champion extra health and extra armor and extra magic resist, it inherently devalued the flat penetration items. So those type of builds on most champions aren't the most viable anymore for example if you look at lethality nocturne builds they hover around a 50 percent win rate if you look at his stride breaker or shield bow builds those are more around a 59 to 65 percent win rate get him with our blue smite chop him down ignite trundle even though Trundle's a great soloist, look at his item too. He has full Divine Sunderer. He has almost as much gold spent as me. I'm just up to plated. How much is that? What's that gold differential? It's like 300, then 36, so an extra five. So like 800 gold-ish, 800 gold plus these. So I'm up like 1500 gold spent, but he does no damage compared to what we can do. We also have, I think, more consistent attack speed because our W, constant 30%, gets all the way up to 50 once it's maxed. And then if I land my shield, it's doubled. So if I block a dragon auto or a baron special attack or a herald special attack or a champion spell with my W, then uh, we get that doubled attack speed. It surprises people. A lot of people don't realize that if you pop Nocturne W, you're basically going to die no matter what champion you are. Turns him into Master Yi real quick. <laughs> Master Yi with the spell shield, really. Biggest mistake on Nocturne, like I said, it's really people building him wrong. Playing him with the old school lethality builds just 
isn't very rewarding and not consistent. So change the build, change your runes. No more electrocute, no more dark harvest, no more lethality stack. Only lethality on him that's like kind of okay is Eclipse, and even then, Stride Break, Shield Bow is way better. Hit him with a QE. Block the Ashar. Got him with my blue smite. Swap to this chick. She flashes away, and then we can heal off this. Oh, that was dirty. That was really dirty. She's probably mad I took some of her minions, but laners have to realize if they're going to miss 90% of a wave and your jungler's... I didn't have to path. I was like already there. If your jungler's already there and you're going to miss 90% of a big wave, you should be more than happy to have your jungler have it. That's like if you're going to be out of your house for like a month and 90% of your food's going to go bad. You should probably give it to somebody or let someone else eat it. You know? Oh, hey, Ash. QE. Got up that blue smite. Let's find some mushrooms here while we have our lethal tempo stacked up. We can break these real quick. Oh, uh, trying to pinch me. Lol. Our Q landed on him, so we're getting extra movement speed. I really needed to. Oh, I'm going to die. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Timo shredded me. I messed up when I didn't shield his blind dart. I was CC'd for. Th that's honestly a load of horse crap. He blinded me. He says 0.5 seconds, which is a lie. His blind starts out on like a two second blind. Even if he's maxing it last, which Timo generally max blind second. I don't think it counts blind as a CC, bruh. Oh, it starts out way higher than that and I don't I only have 22% tenacity so I guess I have 30% tenacity it's a scam and oh I also didn't spend my gold he's like more gold spent than me holy moly why am I trolling go shield bow and abort you really don't want to be dying like what I just did when you have a bunch of shutdown gold it's super grief now Timo just got like a thousand gold for one kill I just realized that uh, our top and mid are losing so hard that uh, we're actually not really ahead as a team. The biggest thing we have going for us is the dragon. So we really need to keep playing for the drag soul. Crits feel really nice. Really, really, really nice from the shield bow. I do have... Uh, oh, that ash build is do do feces you don't want to play these utility style builds unless you're ash support and even then but uh yeah i think i should still focus ash with my uh i need to kill ash first because of her slows they're bonkers got her with the blue smite with the w on ignite get my q on this guy he's doing some damage now but not a crazy amount Platids are definitely helping him survive us for a bit longer. That fight didn't do anything, though. Like, it was a one for two, which is sure. It's good for us. What do we get out of it? A red buff? I mean, we'll take Harold off of it, but still, it's not a, like a crazy fight. Oh, this is bad. Dude, Timo's freaking strong as heck, bro. I think he ignited us there, too. He's probably going to kill Singed. I might actually have to get magic resist. I only have 47 MR and Timo's two full item plus a sem somewhat stacked dark seal. Our build is not great against Timo. The plated does not, not too much against him since it's armor instead of magic resist. Simultaneously, uh, he's not that much of a self healer, even with his build. Even with uh, Rift Maker in the early game, we're not cu cutting his healing for that much. So. Landed my Q on her into the E. We'll pop W after she has time to react, just in case she tries to R us. Our lethal tempo's already stacked, so for Trundle to try to fight me there was completely foolish. Against lethal tempo and conqueror champions, you need to take it into heavy consideration. When someone already has it stacked because they, they're in, in combat and then you go to fight them, you really need to think about that. Because even if he was equally as fed as me, that would not have turned out well for him. Him going into that fight with zero lethal tempo stacked and me having 
all six, so 78% bonus attack speed. That's just rough. Very rough. Teemo is still a huge issue. He's got nine Dark Seal stacks too. We, we unironically have to build some kind of uh, magic resist. I really don't want to go for wit's end, but I feel like I have to. <laughs> Maybe I can get away a little bit longer not having magic resist. With the thing is wit's end isn't that good on a, a crit 80 nocturne build. I really want to get like, Surlds for the percent base armor shred, the AD ability haste. Any kind of ability haste is really nice on Nocturne because if you're R, every time your R's up, you can kind of get a free kill. So, like for here, for example, dude's out of position, he's not thinking. We Q in midair, we aim in midair, but he flashes away. We're sitting on 385 AD because the trail's giving us 60 right now. Super high. I saved Blue Smite on purpose. I want to have it for chase downs here. Hit him with a QE. Yeah, he's a goner. Hey, Soraka, got you with my Q, blocked out with my W, and you're dead. Can't really get to Ash from here. I need my R up. It's about a minute long cooldown. Just pestering me. Could have W'd that for attack speed. Camille finds the engage, Ash flashes. It'll be worth it though. I block Ash's volley, getting the instead of 35% attack speed, we'll have a total of 70% bonus. Not bad. It's actually really nice to be able to pop that because most champions have to stand still to cast their abilities. The example of the champion who doesn't is Syndra on all of her abilities, but R, she can keep moving flawlessly without standing still. So when Ash has to stand still there, uh, it lets us catch up and we we can keep moving while casting W, so actually it turns out really nicely. You can cast your Q in midair. It can be useful. Uh, usually casting E in midair is more useful, though. The E or the W cast midair. Because if they're going to knock you out of the air, obviously W cast early. And by hitting your E with them as soon as possible, it helps you land your fear before they can try to break out of the chain. Because if they get too far away from you, then they break essentially break out of it. I think I, yeah, I stopped his blind art. So even though he ignited me, he got absolutely brutalized there. We got a little lucky with our W timing. Even if we didn't though, I think we still kill him because he didn't proc our shield bow and shield bow is huge. Back to full health. Oh my gosh, life still is balanced and healthy for the game. Who would have guessed? <laughs> Who would have guessed that life still is super balanced? Got him with the Q trail into the E. Should probably just Baron off that. So you can spell shield barons. Ooh, I gotta, I gotta lay my herald. When you're in combat with dragons, barons or heralds, it doesn't let you lay your herald. It's super annoying. Any kind of epic monster or champion, it stops you. So long too. Teammates are probably like, why aren't you helping? Not realizing it was forcing me to wait that long. Yeah, they're really trying to force here. Holy crap, Talon. You're going to eat him in midair. Follow him down. 90% bonus movement speed. Goodbye. Should probably just group on the Herald there. I got forced to come back because of the Talon. No one else was going to be able to run him down. My Herald's going to be completely wasted topside. No one's running to it. We're so far away. I don't think we'd even be able to get there in time. Maybe if the enemies are going to do this nonsense. Down goes the Trundler. It looks like our Herald is going to get some value from the top side. Say we just go top and base race with these guys. They can't out base race a Herald drop, especially 80 knock, uh, or 80 Nocturne build. We're going to have really high 80. When we're on our Q, we have 400 AD. That helps a lot with your crit since a crit is double damage. So instead of 338, it's doing like 700 there. Pass is about to be up. It's just AOE hit some healing. Oh, it sucks. I really wanted to kill the Ash Soraka. 
I lost vision. You can go for a blue ward on Nocturne and it works just fine. I, I just don't have it yet. We'll Q for the movement speed. Oh, what? Did he just get out of Camille R? And they quit. They had enough. They didn't even let us get an in inhib. They just said, man, we've had enough of this. <laughs> Let's look at the graph. Looking at damage dealt enemy champions, we had the most dealt in the game at 33k. Teemo was a close runner up. Looking at damage taken, we had the most taken on our team, but not the most in the game. Looking at runes, pretty high value. I like this page a lot. Amazing carry potential. And we'll go ahead and do a part two since that was so short. Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to part two. We're up against an Ignite Udyr. Very interesting to see other junglers take Ignite as a secondary summoner. It's becoming a little bit more common, I'd say, especially with the Conqueror Lethal Tempo jungler meta. It's very scrappy. I think we should be able to take Udyr, especially on Nocturne. If you successfully block something with your W, not only are you completely negating that damage from that ability, getting double attack speed, Nocturne doesn't really lose against any champion, not even really a Warwick. Nocturne has the Ignite for the heal cut since Warwick's such a big heavy self healer. They just ran the world's cheesiest invade level one. We might not be able to start on our blue anymore, unfortunately. They have Heim Top. Heim Top's fine against melees, especially really short range, bad gap close melees like Garen. By the time Garen gets in range to Q, Heim just drops point blank electric grenade stun to where Garen can't even dodge unless Garen has flash. It's very unplayable for Garen. If Heimer kind of knows what he's doing. A little bummed out. We can't start on our blue. It's just too dangerous. The bard level one with Sivir Lethal Tempo versus Arcane Comet. Arcane Comet is poop. One of the worst keystones in the game especially like to, for a real fight when you need to have some serious muscle that is not the that is not the uh keystone to have it's fairly wasted q not the prettiest q in the world it's all right it shouldn't affect too much by the way heimer jungle is actually a lot of fun i put out a video on it there is a person, I forget what region, but there's a region where someone unironically plays Heimer Jungle and like Master Tier Elo, and it's it's a lot of fun. People don't respect it, they don't understand your damage outputs. And uh, yeah, the main thing is with off meta junglers is you need to understand how to clear on them, what to build, and what runes to take. Other than that, it's really simple. Just need the right setup. If you do the wrong clear on an off meta jungler, oh my god, the game's unplayable. <laughs> Oh, I accidentally took E level 2. Oh my goodness. No wonder my clear's slow this time. You want your W level 2 for the extra attack speed. <laughs> I'm trolling myself. Let that be a lesson to you people. Take W level 2. Let's see how much it affects it. So our clear was roughly as efficient this time as last in terms of like how we did it besides taking E level two instead of W level two. See how big of a difference that actually makes. Now, to be fair, we did pull this way earlier than last time. So we still finished at nearly the same time. We finished 325, but it's because we pulled blue and ground really early this time. It was a much cleaner pull. So it didn't actually affect clear versus last time. Realistically, I think it slowed our clear down by about five seconds. Not the end of the world. Karthus and Nakata. I think that's a pretty big Kata matchup. Not if she does that, though. I'm assuming he doesn't have flash. Didn't get that last auto on him. Now we need to pull out of his range. I'm gonna help her push so she can reset. Now she can go back, spend her gold to get her health back. If your laner gets stuck staying when they're up on gold, it, just, it ruins their lane. Oh, this dude's gonna walk into us. Oh, this, yeah, I wonder if I can kill him from this position. Nah, this is bad. Karthus is gonna rotate. Yeah, I'll block that. Easy peasy. If Uder didn't react or if he was in his shop, I think we kill him there. Just need to get a little bit closer. He turns around for the bear stance and we W the bear stance and we're Gucci. 
First item rush, it's gonna be the same thing. Kenpunk Chainsword, super inexpensive, super high value item. We have a weird amount of gold. I'll just buy boots. It's, it's annoying. I'm not gonna wait in base for 20 more gold when I can simply grab boots and leave. I need to get a snappy level six. The speed in which you hit your level six on Nocturne is absolutely critical. Now, an Udyr doesn't matter because he doesn't have a ultimate power spike, so <laughs> it's kind of pointless on him. Still, you really want to make sure you're getting as much XP as possible. The loophole for that is when you share minions, you and your laner both get the majority of the total. You can't share monsters. Monsters, only the person who last hits it gets it, and the jungler gets more XP since they have jungle item. But the minions, you both get the majority of the total. So if you can set up situations where you get to share with your laner, so after a successful gank, for example, you don't take the last hits, only take XP. Set up the last hits for your laner, then it puts you in such a good spot. Hitting that early level six, you can it gives you much more solo carry potential. We'll go ahead and spell shield that for the attack speed bonus. Things like Nocturne are pretty good against Karthus because like you see there with your W, you can block that off. Plus we can engage on him. Once he has Zhonya's, it's more annoying. And he took the free stopwatch, so that's definitely going to come. We should be able to handle him though. MF R outranges him. Seraphine R outranges him. We're almost level 6 pre-7 minute. That's really good. Drop a double ping there. Notice how we don't ping the Heimer. We ping where Udyr is. The ping on red buff was an accident. If you ping your teammates, they take personal offense. Ping what the enemies are and like where they're going. And your teammates are much less likely to mute you. It needs to be good information, right? There's nothing for us to take here. And we're almost level six. Just needed one Raptor, one Krug. If you don't know where the enemy jungler is and you're in a four spicy position like this, absolutely don't waste your E on the camp. Since I knew where Uder is, it's perfectly fine. I'd rather take this faster hit level six and go get the enemy bot. Sivir no boots, bard no boots, bard no HP item, bard no armor. Same with Sivir. Neither one has HP, armor, or movement speed. So this should, in theory, be a banger of a gank. Didn't bother to R since I'm so deep in behind her. Apparently you can't spell shield ignite. It's kind of interesting. I don't think we can even kill him because I don't have my thing up. We will be getting a lot of mana back per second at least. Oh, he might actually be screwed now. Yeah, because we have red buff, burn. Oh, yeah. Nice try, Seraphine. Get that out of here. Stack lethal tempo. I hope Karthus runs into me. I'll knock him out. <laughs> a non-lethal tempo, non-conquer champ trying to fight a lethal tempo conk champ. That's not going to turn out well if everyone's full HP. Bleak has gotten to a point where Lethal Tempo and Conquer are just so good that, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like runes are too impactful, items are too impactful, where you can't play the game <laughs> just based off of, oh, this champ versus that champ, this level versus that level. It, it's, it's a lot more about runes and items than really anything else. Karthus is mid. Ooh, why would someone be over here? That was Udyr. Yeah, hey, buddy. You want to tickle my pickle? Because you don't win this. I have lethal tempo and you don't. Yup. We, we even had less gold spent than he had there. We win that. We did have a level advantage at the time, though. So that doesn't hurt. Did he ignite us there? I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. Now we can get Kempunk Chainsword, and this dude is in trouble. Hey, it doesn't even cancel our recall. We're chilling, because it didn't do any damage. That's a weird thing. If someone has a, some type of shield on them, like a Jana shield, or like a Yas passive, if they're recalling and you go to hit them, if it doesn't do more damage than the shield itself, it won't even stop their recall because they have to take damage to their actual HP and not the shield itself. It's it's pretty annoying and I wish it didn't work like that. It's just a little quirk in the game. Kind of like if you're laying Herald, you can spam Oracles or Blue Ward. 
and it will give you a charge back immediately after a second or two. Dude, why are you in my jungle, though? He's so lucky that my thing was already on a cooldown, but he doesn't win this at all. Like, at all. <laughs> Nocturne's not a pushover in one versus one fights, as, lo as long as you're building the right stuff. If you're going Lethality, Electrocute, or Dark Harvest, then sure, you're a pushover, but... 30% constant attack speed is no joke on top of the extra AD. You kill Nocturne by kiting him out. You don't kill him by just mashing on his face. Goodbye, Bard. I could probably dive this chick. That map didn't take tank long enough. She could have taken... One more shot easy. The second shot would have left her really low, but as the range champion, you're supposed to generally be the one tanking first since you can hit and you're already near the outer edge to where you can take a half a step back and be out of range. The melee champ has to go in balls deep, putting themselves at much higher minimum turret shot threshold for trying to escape. So just a little tip for you guys there. Look at me giving you the tips. Big old tip. Oh dear. Yeah, what are we building? Oh yeah, we're going for shield bow. Shield bow is really overpowered because 80 carry players are the most complainy players in the game because they have to play with supports. So they, they end up getting their way. They all whine at a certain frequency. It's like the youngest kid in the family when they cry, the mom or dad can hear it and differentiate it and they come running. So they 80 carry squeals and whines. It's, uh, they definitely get, I'd say supports too get that treatment. Supports and AD carries have gotten way too impactful with way too good of items. Supports basically getting the most gold in the game by far because their item gives way too much. Like, like Seraphine's item guys, like look, she's, look at her. It's already given her 700 gold. For free. 700 gold, that's more than two kills, man. MF has two kills. So you're telling me an AD carry that's playing well, right? Decent CS, double kill. Like her item has done more than MF's kills. That it's too much. It really is. I guess as long as you don't think of support as a support, it shouldn't bother you, but I'm I came from the times when supports it meant what it meant. Now supports I'd say is just a second jungler. Oh wait, we spell shielded that. What the heck? Kata with the kill still. It's fine. I'd rather him die than get away. Ooh, your tier two boots, no real item. Oh, that missed. I think I'm just taking Herald ending this game early. This game's even more one-sided than the last one. Their uh Udyr. Their whole team's <laughs> dying. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a struggle fest for all of them. I'd say Udyr bears most of the blame for trying to solo us. Because their, their team hasn't really gotten any impactful ganks this whole game. Because Udyr's been busy fighting me in my jungle. <laughs> that, that That's something about Udyr that... Uh, he's not a very strong soloist anymore in the early game. He's much more of a team fighter in the mid late game, but his solo capabilities, you're not going to beat a Zinzao on him, a Warwick, Nocturne, heck, even a Lee Sin. Jarvan might even be able to solo a Udyr early game. Jarvan is by no means a top tier soloist either. Problem is, is since Udyr has to go for his, his basically Phoenix stance max first, it puts him in a spot where... His solo damage capacity is rather low, so yeah, that's kind of what you need for one versus ones to the death. But in the late game, after he has some, he has his burn item. His AOE damage is good enough to justify the champion. You can only really win solos if he has a significant advantage in terms of level and. At, and gold spent, that type of thing. Or if he's fighting a really weak soloist like a tank jungler. 
because he does have good max health damage, right? So if he's fighting a, a low damage, high health jungler, then sure, maybe Udyr can solo it. I'm seeing Uder's win rates get lower and lower, though. I feel like people kind of learned how to play against it. Champions like Vayne tear him up. Mobile max health damage champs destroy Uder because Uder likes to stack health items and Uder inherently lacks a lot of mobility. I think you have to take Ghost on Uder, honestly. If you don't take Ghost, you can't close. That's a bit of the champion's issue right now is... If you go for a bear stance, they don't, they changed all the names, but you know what I'm talking about. If you go bear stance max first, he's unplayable. You can't clear your camps. If you go at second, you're very squishy for team fights. And it's the same thing with turtle. If you max turtle third, you're too squishy for team fights a lot of the time. So it's, it's tough on that champ right now. I don't envy Udyr. Or Udyr players. Got him. Karthus Panic R. I guess he couldn't see anything, so maybe he thought that would help. <laughs> I can't see. I'm going to do it. I'll press it. Catagon and Deep. It's not worth it, though. Whether Udyr lives or dies there is pretty irrelevant. It doesn't change anything in this game. Oh, man. Who hit that plant? Split. Dragon up in 30. We'll go ahead and take that. Garen went in for the uh, rotation there. I'll, I'll reset for the dragon. Might as well. We got a lot of gold. If we win this fight, they guaranteed lose the game. If we somehow manage to throw, I don't even know how that'd be possible. None of them have enough gold for an actual full item power spike. So me, MF, Cat are all full item on their partials. It's a huge differential. Even if they are similar level. I don't think... Well, the late game's not bad because they have Sivir, but at the same time, MF, R is insane. MF can take any keystone in the game. In late game, she's still nutty because of her R. We'll block that for the extra attack speed. Wouldn't recommend doing that, though, if enemies are trying to fight you while you're taking Dragon. Got it. Lost vision of him. Spell shielded the stun into the fear Q. Ah, oh, poor Garen. Their team has one kill. <laughs> Who gave it to him? MF. Why? See, they're chasing kills right now. It doesn't do anything. When you're already ahead. There's zero upside to getting more kills. It's completely pointless. We could only play for objectives, and they wouldn't be able to catch up in enough gold to ever fight us 5v5 on those objectives. So when you end up just chasing kills, you'll end up doing turret dives that don't make sense, or you'll overextend like 2v5, 1v5, and die. It's the thing about League. The, thing, the challenging part is supposed to be building the lead. The easy part should really be just don't throw. Like I'm kind of throwing here, for example. Yeah, I'm dead. Oh, yeah, the easy part, guys. I'm forcing an all-in fight in their base while there's no one else here. That was a giga IQ brain move. That's what, part of what makes it hard if you just get bored or if you... <laughs> it's easy to feel like you can't die, I guess. Dang. Can't really get away from Uder once he's tier 2 boots. He has perma slow with his R. His R is on a low enough cooldown. He can spam it. It lasts for 4 seconds and it gets down to like a 3 second cooldown. To where it's an infinite 30% slower or whatever it is. I'll go for, uh, I could go Bork or Surlds. I'm kind of fielding the Surlds though, because I want more ability haste rather than on hit. And I also want some percent base armor shred to kill Udyr and Garen easily. Plus us taking that inhib there was bad. You don't want to take inhibs 18 minute mark or sooner, really 19 minute mark or sooner, because then you give the enemies a bunch of free gold next P off minions. 
because your supers will kill everything and you can't take Baron yet. So you really want to wait till Baron's about to spawn before we pop in Hib. Hey friend, getting with Q and Air. W on myself, Blue Smite. And Kata once again. More than eager to kill still. It's fine to take Inhib now, it's 20 minute mark. If we had Bork and a Vampiric, we could solo Baron 100%. Be able to heal more and we'd be able to block stuff with W, get extra attack speed. Down with the E. Blocked his stun with the W. Gotta just push in the waves now. Four of them are dead. Garen's up. Hit the refills. And they quit. That is GG's well played. I don't know if we'll actually have the most damage dealt this game. We're somewhere in terms of top two damage dealt, top three damage taken, I think. Looking at damage ultimate champions, we were indeed top two. Heimer with the most, poking down Garen. For damage taken, we were top three. Self mitigated, we were number one on our team. So our stats weren't quite as good as they were last game, but still pretty solid. All in all, Nocturne Jungle, an absolute blast of play. Just playing with the right runes, right build, and you'll have a lot of fun. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.